Okay, let's go ahead and begin. Uh, I'd like to get started today by having a quick little chat about the state of things. I know that we had a pretty tough assignment due last week. Um, and as you are certainly aware, I've been giving you some surveys uh, to provide some feedback. So for those of you who filled that survey out, uh, thank you. I really appreciate it. I do read them and I wanted to chat with you about a couple things that I saw. Uh, some responses and just let you know kind of where we're at and um, make sure that we're all on the same page going forward uh, because we do still have one more assignment and another uh, uh, big project coming up as well. So um, uh, I always ask people how they feel the assignment was, if it was too easy, too hard, or just right, and um, probably comes as no big shock that nobody thought this past assignment was too easy. Uh, but a fair number of people actually did think that it was just right, although the majority did think that it was a bit on the difficult side. I don't necessarily disagree. I actually think very much that this is a hard assignment, and I acknowledge the fact that it was uh, more difficult than uh, the uh, first couple of assignments, so I wasn't really surprised to see that outcome on the survey. Um, I think just to kind of, you know, in, in my defense a little bit, we did warn you. We, we gave you a heads up, right? We told you that this was tougher. Um, so uh, I think uh, hopefully that helped a little bit. I hope that maybe, um, I mean, the people in this room, I feel like people who regularly attend and participate in class probably didn't need as much of a heads up, perhaps, as the people who don't. But um, for the people who might be watching over the video, I hope that you take our suggestions seriously when we let you know that things are difficult and uh, definitely get started early on these things. We did notice a pattern that, you know, for the first week, of the assignment office hours were basically dead we offered to hold extras and there wasn't a whole lot of response so um, and then during the last few days they just got slammed which you know it is what it is we dealt with it as best as we can um, but uh, I certainly would have liked to see more people showing up early um, instead of all coming in the last couple days I know you have other classes I know this isn't the only class on your agenda I'm just trying to give you a little bit of taste of things from my perspective. Um, and the reason why this matters is because while the, the fourth assignment, the blackjack assignment, I don't think is gonna be as hard as the last one was, it's still pretty tricky. Um, it's definitely harder than the first two. So uh, my goal this whole semester, I don't know, I don't remember if I've had a conversation with you about this or not, but my goal was to kind of peak the assignments around two and three, it definitely peaked around three, right? And then kind of come back down a little bit uh, for the fourth one. Uh, to give you a little bit of breathing room to switch gears into the project. So uh, this fourth assignment I don't think will be as hard as the last one, but it's still going to be a little bit tricky. You're still encouraged to start sooner rather than later. I've got office hours tomorrow. Uh, my TAs have office hours tomorrow. Um, you know, if you have the time to work on it this week, I don't think it'd be unreasonable to have it knocked out before you go home for spring break, and that's one less thing you have to worry about. So just something to keep in mind. Just uh, wanted to let you know that I am aware. Uh, I do hear you. Uh, I am listening to that feedback and uh, please keep it coming. Please let us know um, what we can do. Um, some other feedback I received, you know, things like, uh, uh, I guess a common thing that I saw was, you know, there was stuff on the assignment that we didn't explicitly talk about in class. And, and I know, I actually, that, that was somewhat intentional. Um, I don't necessarily feel bad about doing that at this level. Uh, in a 400 level class, a lot of people are getting ready to graduate and go on and get jobs out in the field. And I don't think that's an unreasonable thing to expect people at that level to, to be able to handle, um, to give you a little bit that's outside of what we had time to cover in class and expect you to be able to use the documentation and find your own way and make it happen. So uh, you, of course, are welcome to disagree with me on that one, but I actually think that's a great skill to have to develop and it will serve you well. Uh, wherever, you, wherever you end up out of after after here. Um, so um, you'll keep seeing little things like that happen. Uh, there's definitely a little bit of that on this last assignment as well. And uh, you know, you're always welcome to come talk to me or talk to my TAs if you need help figuring that stuff out. That's what we're here for. Um, the other thing that I saw mentioned in regards to what we do in class, how we spend time in class, was uh, um, well, a couple things that are I think maybe kind of related. Some people wanted these uh, days, these little demo days, coding days, to be a bit more interactive, which I actually agree with, and it's something that I have kind of been struggling with. The way that the class is set up is so that the interactive piece is 
you know, largely on studio days, right? And that's kind of what I've been using to justify the fact that Tuesdays maybe aren't so interactive. So Tuesdays we um, see a little demo and then Thursdays we actually put you to work and that's very interactive, of course. And for the large part, I feel, I feel like it's been going well, but I still think that the Tuesday classes could be more interactive than they are. I think that's a valid criticism. Um, and another thing that somebody has asked me to do is to post uh, code ahead of time, which I think actually is kind of related. If I post some of the code ahead of time, then you could follow along or attempt to follow along with me as I code stuff up. And so I've done that today, actually. I posted the starter code uh, for the camera demo that we're about to get started. So if you want to get out your laptop and download this code, and try to follow along with me as I code up this camera app, you are more than welcome to do so. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you want to sit back and you just want to watch me do all the work today and chat about this app, that's fine with me too. However however you feel best about proceeding, but that was a request that I got and so I wanted to follow through on that um, and uh, make that available to you. Um, so are there any questions or anything about uh, logistical stuff or assignment stuff or uh, anything else, any other comments that you'd like to add before we start doing some coding stuff today before we move on. Y'all good? All right. Um, so today is camera day. We're gonna talk about uh, how to use the camera with our Android apps. And so it's actually gonna lean a little bit on concepts that we've already talked about. Which, so it makes it kind of a good little review session. Um, and uh, we'll do a little bit of Firebase stuff today too, actually tie it into what we did last week. So uh, some really fun stuff you can do with the camera once you got some of the basic stuff set up. So the first thing that I want to do is uh, make a little app that really all, all I wanted to do, oh, I have an error. Oh, I know why. Yeah, because I have my Firebase imports here still. I'm going to take those out for now. We'll put them back later um, when we get to that part. Um, so the first thing I want to do is just make a very simple app that's going to allow us to take a picture and then display that picture in our app, right? If we can get that far, then we can do basically whatever else we want. We can manipulate that photo, we can save that photo in a database, we can do you know whatever we need to with that picture. But how do we actually acquire that photo and get it into our app? That's step number one. Um, and then once we get that finished, we'll do some fun stuff with Firebase, uh, some machine learning kinds of activities with Firebase uh, that can be a lot of fun. So the nice thing about uh, interacting with the camera is that you know every Android device that has a camera it's going to already have a camera app on it to interact with the camera. And for the vast majority of your camera needs, there's, you know, that, that built-in app is perfectly suitable. Um, you can change the functionality of the camera app if you really need to, uh, to uh, make some customized camera-focused apps if you really want to. Uh, but if all you're trying to do is just basic camera functionality, take some pictures, take some video, and then get that stuff into your app, using the built-in camera functionality is um, probably the way to go. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do. I've got a very simple layout set up. Um, if I can pull up my layout for you real quick before we, uh, before we proceed. Oh, nice. Here we go. Uh, it's just a... That's tiny. It's just an image view uh, with a, a button for taking a photo and then a little label at the top that we're not going to use right away. We'll use that a little bit later on. So it's just an image view and a button to take a photo. The first thing we're going to do is make it so that when I push that button to take a photo, it lets us take a picture and then get, grabs that picture from the camera and sticks it in this image view. Um, so pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, before we get to actually hooking up the button and doing stuff with the camera, we actually need to tackle the issue of permissions. So we've seen permissions pop up before if we need to use the network or access the internet in any way. Um, we've had to do that. Uh, we also need permissions to access the camera. So um, where do those permissions usually go? Where do manifest. I see those? Manifest, yeah, good. So we're gonna pop into the manifest real quick and add a couple of lines uh, to um, make sure that we've got proper permissions to access the camera. There's actually two of them that we need. Um, uses permission, and then Android name, Android dot permission dot camera. So this is actually saying that we need permission to access the camera, but then we're gonna put another very similar but slightly different uh, tag on here called uses feature. Um, 
Android name, uh, android.hardware.camera. So these look very similar. They're slightly different. One of them, the first line is literally, you know, has the user given us permission to access the camera? The second line, uses feature, is saying this is going to access the hardware on the phone, the camera hardware on your phone. So um, we're telling it what devices, what hardware devices on our phone that we need, and then also acquiring the permission from the user to access those devices. And this isn't the last we'll see of permissions. We're actually going to have to do a little bit of extra work on the coding side to make sure that we have proper permissions as well, um, which is uh, what we can move on to chat about next. So I'm going to switch over to my main activity. And uh, the first thing that I want to do is make it so that when I hit that button, uh, we go off and we pull up the built-in camera app and, and allow us to take a picture. But in order to do that, we need to actually check and make sure that we have permissions from the user first. You've seen this. If you've used apps that require the camera, it'll pop up a little dialogue on the screen that says this, this app wants to access the camera. Is that okay? Or something along those lines. And you have to hit hit yes or no. Um, so it's a pretty straightforward uh, uh, API call to make that happen. Uh, I'm going to set up the uh, on-click listener for this guy. Oops. And the first thing that we're going to do is check to see if we have permissions or not. So we'll uh, go to our context and then check self permission is the function that we're using. So we need to tell it who is asking for permission, and that's this this activity, right? This activity is asking for permission, and then what are they asking for permission to access? Uh, oops, or acts accessing the um, camera permission from the manifest. So this value will have a state associated with it. Either that permission has been granted to us by the user or it has not. And Android is smart enough to where, you know, if we ask the user for permission, it'll remember so we don't have to ask them every single time, right? Um, and so that's kind of what we're going to do next is do a, a quick little check to see if the permission is not been granted to us dot permission granted. So if we have not been explicitly granted permission by the user, we need to request it. We need to make a request. Um, so we'll make an API call to request that permission. And again, we have to specify what it is specifically that we are requesting. This activity is requesting permissions for the camera. And for whatever reason, it, well, I know why. I shouldn't say for whatever reason. It wants the permissions in an array. This allows us to ask for multiple permissions at once if we need to. In this particular case, we only need to ask for one permission, so the array feels a little uh, redundant. But this does give us the ability to uh, Uh, what did I say it was? Uh, camera? I think it's just camera. Yeah. And then bracket. Do I got too many parens on here? I think I do. I don't know where those extra parens came from. Uh, oh, wait. I need one paren. I had one too many. I got one too many now? No, it wants to bring camera. I think you have 120 friends to the left of this. Left, 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 friend, friend. Am I missing an argument? You wanted an int as well? Uh, yeah, like it's just dot left plus parentheses, parentheses, parent. Paren, paren. Oh, I see. There's an extra one there. It reformatted my line weirdly. So one, one, two, two. Are you okay now? Is it waiting for a third paren? It was waiting for a third paren. It's looking for a request code, um, which, what do I want to use for the request code? I actually don't have that written down in my notes. Mm. Request code. Well, I'm going to have to look this one up. Sorry. I did not make a note of that. Uh, Uh, 
All right. Uh, request permissions. Oh, okay. So it's just some uh, static request code. I gotcha. An app defined int constant. Gotcha. Um, so we can define that up top, I suppose. Uh, And the reason why we need this is so that uh, if we have multiple requests for permissions taking place, we know uh, which one um, which one we are getting permission for should we have multiple requests out at once. Just a little tag to make sure. All right, cool. And so that's going to take care of the requests. And then we have the other situation, which is they've already... Um, you know, made a made a request in the past and uh, have given us permission. So the user's already given us permission. Uh, in which case, we can go ahead and fire off the uh, camera. And so the camera is an app again; it already exists on the phone. How do I get from one app to another? What technique do we use? Hold on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Create the other app. Create the other app. Like the on yeah, we're moving in the right direction. There's an actual construct we need to create to specify that I want to go do this thing over here. What's that called? Intent. An intent. Yeah, I need to make an intent. Good. So I'm going to make an intent to pass off to uh, the camera app. So we're going to go ahead and make that intent. Camera intent is equal to a new intent. And so interestingly enough, right, when I make this intent, I don't necessarily know what the camera app is called. And actually, if you don't like the default camera app on your phone, you can go download other ones, right? So there may not be just one camera app on your phone. Um, or maybe we want the user to choose what camera app they want to use on their phone, right? We want to give them the flexibility. So this intent is going to be a bit more general. I'm not going to say go do this specific app or go to this specific camera. I'm going to say that I want to fire off an intent that is going to allow us to capture an image. So action image capture is telling the operating system, find some app out there or maybe multiple apps out there that will allow us to capture images on this phone. If there's only one, it's just going to pick that one, right? If all you have is the default camera app, it's just going to pick that one. If there are multiple apps out there that will allow you to do this, you've seen this pop up before, I'm sure. It'll, it'll pop up that list at the bottom and say, which one do you want to use to open this, this request, right? I see that a lot. Um, so uh, this is the functionality that will either you know, pick the default camera app if that's all there is, or let the user um, choose what camera app they want. And then I'm going to call start activity for result. Why am I using start activity for result here? What's the result going to be? Picture. The picture. Yeah, the picture that we get back. So if I want to get that data back out, I need to use start activity for result. I'll pass it the intent. And then we need to have some sort of request code for this uh, uh, activity operation as well. This is the only intent that I you know, think that we're going to be um, sending out, but just to be consistent with the proper Android syntax, we'll say uh, all right. Image capture code. Okay. Anybody with me so far? And so really, this is, this is basically uh, all there is to getting access to the default camera app or whatever camera app might exist on the phone. But we now have to deal with what happens when the, they've actually taken a picture. So if we think about the step-by-step -step process that occurs here, right? they hit the button. It's going to ask them for permission if, if they haven't previously granted it. Hopefully, they grant permission. It'll pop up the camera app. We'll take a picture with the camera. And then it will send that picture back to us, at which point we need to retrieve that picture from the intent and stick it into our app. 
So that's kind of the last step. How do, where does start activity for result? Where's that going to come back to? What function? Almost. You're close. You're warm. It's actually showing up on the list right now. This guy right here. On activity result. If I start an activity for a result, whenever that activity is finished, in this case, whenever the user's taken a picture and said that's the one that they want, it'll call this function. And you can see the parameters here, the request code, which is going to be this, right? That tag, the result code. What's that represent? Uh, success, or success or failure, right? Did the activity succeed or fail? And then the data. This is where the picture is going to be, hopefully, right? Um, so we need to process it. This is what we did back in lab two, uh, a few weeks back. So we'll check the request code first. Oops. So if, if the activity was, do I have a typo or something? I think you have it inside another. Oh, do I have my brackets messed up still? Man, I am doing really badly with brackets today. There we go. Thank you. All right. If the image, if the activity coming back is a request code, and then we'll check, or I'm sorry, is it an image capture, and then we'll check the result code. Make sure there wasn't an error. So activity results. OK. Now we just need to get the uh, picture out of the intent. Um, where's the data stored in an intent? What's that called? Extra. Extras, right? And this is no different. It's going to be stored in an extra. Uh, the extra is going to have the same name. It's going to be called data. Uh, and we're going to have to cast that data into the format that we want. So we know, because of this request code, that the data coming back to us is an image. Because of that, we know it's going to be in the extra under the key of data. And we know that that data is going to have a particular data type associated with it. Uh, in this case, the data type is going to be a, a bitmap, which is the class that Android uses to represent images. Um, so we're going to grab the data out of the intent, extras, data. How do I cast in? Oh, so actually, what's it, what's it matter about? Oh, yeah. So what's it saying? It's saying, well, what if extras doesn't exist, right? What if there is no extras being passed back as part of this intent? So I can fix that with the double, equal, double exclamation point. Um, and then it could also be concerned that this data key doesn't exist. I think you can do that syntax as well, right? We know that there will be an extra here, and we know that this data key is going to exist because that is the standard structure for capturing images. But the code is not smart enough to make those assumptions. Did you have a question? Yeah. Um, how do I do a cast in, in Kotlin? As. It's the as, yeah. At least that's one, one way to do it. I think there might be other ways as well. But as keyword, as bitmap, where this is a, uh, an Android API class to represent images in Android. There are other image formats that exist in Android, but this one's pretty common. I think it's a little bit of a poor choice because a bitmap actually is an image format that's very old. It's like how all the images from the 90s were stored on your computers, right? Not commonly used anymore, so it's a little bit tragic I think that they chose that name but you know did you have a question uh, can you do like a two bitmap is there a built-in function um so what is the data type of this when I get it back out that's what I you know that's what I'm a little unsure of is it a generic object perhaps or I don't know but you can always you know two and so here's a two this is a generic casting um uh, I think mm, no I don't think this is going to do what we want yeah. Some so if you see a two function, right? Um, that's usually going to be part of a. That's usually going to be a static function as part of a, a type class. Okay. Yeah. I believe that this is probably just a generic object, though. 
coming out of the map. It might not be an object. I guess it could be like a, um, might be like a byte array or something. I kind of doubt it. I guess it's probably a just generic object. Um, but anyway, we know that it's a bitmap. We expect it to be a bitmap. So we're going to pass it to one. Any questions? Yeah, what's up? What's the return of a video? What's the return of a video? That's a good question. Uh, I think it's just going to be video. Video type. Uh, video gets a bit more complicated because of the way that videos can be encoded. You can see... Hmm. Yeah, look at all these fun formats. Video support. What's the actual object, though? That's what it's not telling me. Uh... Yeah, I have to be honest with you, I don't have as much experience with video as images on Android devices, so it's not something I have a deep knowledge of. But you can see, okay, it doesn't actually give any examples of how to deal with video in code, though. Streaming. Hmm. Here we go. Media session, playback state, set callback. Where does it actually specify the... This is how to set up like a built-in media player, you know, with like playback buttons and pause buttons and stuff like that. It doesn't, I don't see where it actually applies the uh, video to be played as part of the as part of the uh, media player it doesn't actually show that aspect of it interesting hmm. yeah I don't know so currently uh, does our app since it opens the camera like, how does it control that you're taking a picture and not a video? Well, so that's because of the intent that we have set up. It's specifically using the image capture, not video capture. So I, there probably is a video capture, video capture. So if I wanted to capture video instead, that would be the one to use. So right? will that prevent you from taking a video on the camera side of the app, or will it just break if you try to send a video? I think, so if I left this as is and kept kept everything else the same, I think this would break because a video is not a bitmap type, so that would break at that point in time. I think it would capture the video and, and store the video. I don't know the proper way to get that into the app, though. We'd have to set up some kind of media player format, retrieve the data out, the video data out, and play it that way. Um, I just don't have a ton of experience doing that, unfortunately. It's a good question. Did you have a question? Or... No. Okay. Just making sure. Um, at any rate, uh, once I've got this bitmap object, it's very easy to deal with. I have this image view on my uh, on my layout. We've used image views before. We use them with the gestures, right, to move the pictures around the screen and stuff like that. So this image is this image view has a name. It's called captured image, and so it's very straightforward from here to um, take the bitmap that that I retrieved and then uh, put it into this image view. Uh, which is kind of the final step that we need before we can test stuff out. Um, so we will just uh, captured image dot set image bitmap and then pass in the bitmap. And that's it. I'm taking the bitmap that we retrieved from the intent, passing it into the image view uh, layout, and uh, it should then display on the app. So we're ready to test things out, but there's actually one very important thing that we um, that a lot of people are confused about when they first use the camera, which is like, we're running this on the emulator, right? So how does the camera work on the emulator? And, and I'll show you a couple ways that you can do it. Uh, first, I'll just go ahead and run it as is and see. We should see the permission stuff happen because I haven't granted permissions to this app before, so we should see that in action. And then we'll see what happens when it tries to let us take a picture um, once it gets loaded up. 
it's going to take a minute or two. Um, I guess once we're done, while while we're waiting for this to start up, oh, that's a different app. That's a different app I've been working on lately. Uh, while this is booting up, um, I can kind of let you know what we're going to be taking a look at next once we get through this. Uh, there's a set of Firebase. Um, uh, there's a Firebase library that lets you do machine learning stuff. And it's a little bit misleading because people think machine learning, it's like, oh, cool, we need to make models and train train models and all this fun stuff. And actually, you can do that, but uh, the Firebase machine learning is actually more applied machine learning. So pre-existing models, they're models that have already been generated, already been tested, are known to work very well. And you can just drop them into your app and apply apply those models to do things. So very common things that people expect to do in apps these days are things like identify the text that's in this picture, identify what this barcode is, identify what the objects are, or show me where somebody's face is at right, um, in this picture. So those are general kinds of machine learning things that while you certainly can train models to do all this stuff, uh, that's not what this class is for. You should take a machine learning class if you're interested in like how to create those models how to set up the machine learning techniques to do that stuff. Firebase lets you just drop pre-built models into your, into your app to apply them to whatever you want to do. And so once we get our camera up and running, we're going to try out the face detection one um, and uh, show you how easy it is to drop, drop that Firebase machine learning uh, library into your app and uh, have it start picking out people's faces. All right, looks like this is about to run so we can test our basic camera functionality. So it's blank right now. Uh, I know the text is kind of small. If I hit take a photo, hello, there we go. There's the permission. So it's asking me if it's okay to take pictures. Uh, and I'll hit allow, because I do want to do that. And what's the camera gonna do? Remember where we are in the simulator, so how's that gonna work? Hello? I think you have to press it again, because you have it in the if else. Oh, you're right. Yeah, I do have to press it a second time. Good call. How would you stop that from happening? Would you just like? Check I could the fire off the again? intent during the if, you know, if I, if I really want to. And so now here we are in camera mode, right? And it gives you some extra little tips and uh, shows you how you can navigate around the camera because it's not an actual device that you have in your hand. You can't manipulate. You can't like move it around, point it around. And then, like, where is this? This is this obviously isn't here. This is a little simulated scene, right? That we can use to. So it's a simulated camera environment. Uh, that we can use. And actually, it's not letting me move the camera around. You should be able to click and drag it to actually like... It's Alt-click. Is it Alt-click? Oh, there you go. Thank you. So we can take a look. This is somebody's little cozy room, I guess. I don't know. Just a blank, blank apartment somewhere. A TV and a window and a couple shelves in it. So, is that a cat? Yeah, that's a cat. So anyway, um, this is a little simulated camera environment, and you can click the Take Picture button, and it will snap a fake picture for you, right, based off of the simulated environment. And then I believe it's going to give us the option to say OK or not OK. It's going very slowly. My computer is struggling with this simulated camera. Hello? Did it freeze on me? Oh no, there we go. So it's giving me, you know, is is this the picture you want, or do you, if you hit the X, or if you hit the back button, it'll let you go back and take a different one. I'll just go ahead and accept it. That's going to close out the camera activity. It's going to send the image back to our app, which retrieves it out of the intent and then sticks it in the image uh, image view part of our app. And so from there, I could do whatever I needed with that, move it around the screen, whatever I want. Yeah. What happened to the resolution? What happened to the resolution? I'm not sure I understand. Um, it looks a lot more blurry. Than... Looks a lot more blurry. Oh, okay. Well, hmm, that's a fair question. Uh, so obviously the picture was taken at nearly full screen mode, right? And then the image view, I don't know how closely it actually matches the resolution of the image itself. That is something that you have to pay attention to. It's actually something that's very difficult because uh, if you're worried about cross-device compatibility, uh, images in particular are tricky to deal with um, because um, you can just fit more of an image on a phone than you can on a, on a tablet or some other device, or even from phone to phone. I mean, 
you guys, I'm sure, have friends with different phones than you who've sent you pictures and you've seen that sometimes they kind of look like crap, right? Um, so that's a, it's a perennial problem that's not an easy one to deal with, unfortunately. The responsiveness techniques that we talked about, like using constraint layouts, do help, but they only go so far. Um, so, so yeah, but we've, we've accomplished the basics here, right? And it's take, it's managed to take a photo and set it up and I should be able to click the button and do it all over again if I want to. That in itself isn't very exciting. So what I'd like to do next is, uh, apply some of that machine learning stuff. It does look a lot sharper, doesn't it? Like a lot sharper. I don't know about you guys on my phone. It does, it does some extra processing after I take the picture. Um, I don't know if it's had a chance to do that in this setup or not. I'm not clear on the specifics. Did you have a... I was just general like with the permissions thing. So if you just walk to the camera and kind of pick out permissions, would it just like never work? Uh, I believe it, it might crash your app if you actually make a request for permissions without having the proper stuff set up in your manifest and uh, proper permissions on the user. It might just crash, say that you tried to do something you weren't allowed to do. Yep. All right, any other questions before we move on, do some uh, more stuff with images, some machine learning stuff? All right, this is the fun part. So let's uh, close this for a second. Really, I just wanna get out of here. I actually don't wanna like close it, close it, because it'll take forever to compile again. Um, so the machine learning stuff that I want to use is through Firebase. So I need to go through the Firebase setup again. I know you did this last week. I know you've seen it a couple times. I'm going to do it again because I want you to get used to this process and you're going to have to do it on the upcoming assignment anyhow. So I'm going to go to my Firebase console and uh, get the setup done. I've done it a few times. I know the process. It should be fairly quick as long as my computer does what I want it to do, hopefully. Hello? Wake up. Uh, the nice thing about Firebase, or, or something that you should be aware of, I suppose, I ran into this problem recently. You might think that because this is a different app, you should make a new project for this app. That's actually not maybe the best way to do it. You're limited to how many projects you can have with the free version of Firebase. So if you add more than uh, three or four projects, Google's gonna start coming and say, oh, if you want more, you gotta pay me, right? So actually, you are you can have multiple apps linked to one project. The only reason that that becomes a problem is if, say, I have a database that I don't want this app to be able to access, right? I only want this, this one app to access it. I don't want all these other apps to access this database. Then, okay, you need to section them off, make different projects. But if you don't care about stuff like that, it's okay to use the same project for different apps. In fact, I would encourage you to do so so that you don't run into the, the limitations of uh, Firebase. And so I'm gonna go back here and scroll down and uh, uh, add another app, another Android app. Where does this package name come from again? Gradle, yeah, or, or the path. You can use the path if you want to, but the easiest way that I found is to open my Gradle file, and it's this right here. Actually, that's not correct. I changed it. Whoops. I think it's just camera. I hope that doesn't cause problems, but it might. We'll find out. Firebase problems are always a lot of fun, too. What's my manifest say, actually, now that I think about it? Yeah, it says camera. Ooh, I'm surprised that even worked at all. The Firebase or the manifest and the Gradle didn't match. That's crazy. Anyway, uh, all right. So, oh, no. I guess I forgot to copy. Copy, paste. Uh, you don't actually need this stuff if you don't want to, so I'll hit register. And then we need to download this file. Boop. I've got a bunch of these. Copy. We'll paste that in. Get rid of this extra junk. Okay. Question. Uh, when you add the new app, 
um, to the Firebase? Is it the, the file is, is it still valid for the previous apps or did you go? The previous apps will still work, yeah. If you look at the what's in this JSON file, I don't know if you've actually opened it up and look at it, um, you can see that they'll look largely the same, but it does generate an API key specific to the app so that you can track usage based on apps, right? So I can actually, if I have one database, it's being shared across four apps, I can actually see which app is hitting that database more. Um, so that's kind of another nice thing you can do. Um, oh, that's interesting. That's definitely, I, I don't know. Like, that's the one that I did last week, right? It's interesting that it says that for the package name. This is the one that I just downloaded, right? <laughs> I hope I didn't grab the wrong one. No, there's the right one. So, yeah, interesting. So this must be then for the database that we did. Oh, and there's another, yet another app that I have tied to this project. You can see that it's actually got all the apps tied to this project. Um, inside of this one file. Could be a, a security concern, perhaps. Um, since they're all under my control, I'm not too worried about it. Um, but once I've got that done, then we need to, of course, add the other stuff to our uh, Gradle file, specifically, uh, I think that one's already there, the project level one. Let me double check real quick and see. This one's already here. And then there's the other one in the build level, or in the app level, uh, this guy right here. Copy that and paste this into the uh, app level one. And then we also need to specify down here in the dependencies which Firebase library we want. So we're doing face detection, which is part of the machine learning uh, library that Firebase provides. So the one that we want, I've got written down in my notes. It's going to be Fire, oops, Firebase uh, ML Vision 18.0.1. So it's the, the Vision machine learning library. And I'm going to hit sync now and hope that everything is okay. I might let this run for a second. Make sure I didn't skip any of the important uh, steps to set this up. Make sure that I can fire project, get everything loaded the way that I need it to. And then we can go back and do some actual machine learning fun stuff. Is there by any chance a way to sync the emulator camera with your computer camera if you have one? That's what we're going to do next, okay. yeah. Because there's no faces in that simulated camera, right? There's So if I want to do face detection, I, that's not a good environment for it. Um, but yes, you can get stuff from the outside world into your app. So that's what we'll do once we uh, set up the face recognition code here in just a second. Looks like this is going to work. If it was going to get mad at me, it would have probably done it by now. I say that, and then there's always a chance that it doesn't. All right, cool. Nice. So let's go back and uh, continue where we left off down here. And now we're going to do some fun machine learning stuff. So we have this bitmap, which is the image, represents the image. And I want to just detect and see if there's any faces in, in this image. And so the we'll, first thing that we actually need to do is uh, set up Firebase. So there's a lot of uh, API calls that we need to do to set up Firebase. Uh, for example, we need to make what's called a, uh, a Firebase image. So Firebase ah, vision image. This is an image specifically formatted for use with the Firebase uh, Vision machine learning tools. And there's a from bitmap um, function here that we can use to give it our Android bitmap. So take the Android Vision, or take the Android image object and convert it into one that's suitable for working with the Firebase machine learning library. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up a Firebase object called a detector. Uh, to uh, actually do the, the face detection. So um, there's a lot of options that you can set, which of course you'll need to check out the documentation to pick the ones that are of interest to you. Uh, 
Uh, the very basic options, so if you don't really turn anything extra on, all it can really do is tell you if there's a face in the picture or not, and it, it can also draw a box around it, right? Like, that's basically it. If you want to do additional fun features, like it can actually detect what it calls um, uh, landmarks and do um, classification techniques as well. So landmarks would be like, not just is there a face in the picture, but where's the eye, where's the ear, right? Where's the mouth? And then classification is, all right, you found a face. What category does this face fit in? Where the categories are things like, is it smiling? Is it frowning? Are the eyes open or the eyes closed, right? So you can actually tell things about the face um, that, you, that you've captured. So those are all things you need to decide up front. What, are, what am I trying to do with this uh, um, face capture stuff? Um, so those are all options that you need to decide on ahead of time so that you can then set up your uh, Firebase object to do the face detection. Uh, so we're going to make a uh, Firebase Vision face detector options object. Oh man, great name for a class. All right. Uh, did I do something? Oh, I need to import this. No, Firebase Vision Face. I misspelled it. There it is. And now I can import. All right. So I'm going to pick some options. Uh, set performance mode. This is going to be, uh, there is a coarse grain and a fine grain, which of course, you know, if you're looking to do things fast, you go coarse grain. If you're looking to do things accurately, but willing to accept that it might take a little bit longer, um, then you can use the other, other modes. So uh, face detection options dot accurate would be the, the more accurate one. And then we can set the landmark mode, which is basically, do we want it to detect uh, facial features or do we just want the generic here's a face, right? Um, so again, that'll be a Firebase Vision to Face Detector Options. Oh my gosh, what a mouthful. Um, all landmarks. So give me everything. Tell me where the nose, eyes, ears, everything. Okay. And then finally, we'll set the classification mode, which is, do we want to classify this face? Do we want to set it to categories? Is that, is that not something that we care about? If we don't do classification, it's, it's a performance trade-off, right? Uh, am I trying to do quick and dirty, get things done fast, or do I want to take the extra time to do classification on this face? Um, I'm just going to turn everything on so that we can have fun with it and do a little bit of demo with the various things. All classifications. And and that's just the options, right? All of those statements, we're just setting up the various options for this thing. Um, now we'll go ahead and create the actual object that's gonna do the image detection for us, or the face detection for us. Uh... Oh, whoops, I skipped a step. get instance, get vision face detector options. And I need to import this guy. So we set up a bunch of options. We set up this uh, detector. And now, as you can imagine, our next step is going to be to feed in the image to the detector and let it do its work. It's going to apply the machine learning to the image. And then we have to go through the, the results and decide what we want to do with the results. Now, this is actually an interesting piece here. There's one option that I didn't mess with because actually I, I really can't, which is where does, this, does the machine learning take place? There's two, two ways that you can uh, do machine learning. One is you can do it directly on the device, on the phone. Uh, the other way is you can do it in the cloud. So I can actually let the machine learning happen I can let Firebase do the, apply the model on the cloud directly. Um, there's pros and cons to, to both approaches, right? If I do it on the phone, uh, of course, the phone has limited resources. So the processing speed is probably going to take longer, right? Just doesn't have as much resources. It can take a little bit longer. We also have to download more stuff. We have to download the machine learning model to the phone before it can actually use it. 
So the first few times that you use a Firebase machine learning library on a, on a device, it's gonna take, it's gonna lag a little bit because um, it has to download the models. If you do it on the cloud, it does eliminate some of those problems, but then you're sending these images to the cloud, to Firebase. So that takes a little bit of time, but the, the processing speed is gonna be a lot better because you're doing it on an actual uh, you know, computer device, a server somewhere that's got a lot more horsepower to, to crank these things out. Um, with our capabilities right now, we're basically forced to do it on the device. If you want to do it on the cloud, that's more money. You got to pay them. So you're not allowed to do machine learning stuff on the cloud without a paid account. Have to do it on the device. If you do have a paid account, then you can set an option to specify that you want to do it on the cloud instead. But we don't have that option. So something to consider. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and uh, tell it to go. Detector. Detect an image and then pass it the Firebase image. This is still somewhat of an asynchronous call. We don't know how long this is going to take, right? It's being done on the device. I'm not sending it out over the network necessarily, although I might have to download the model. So that's going to take you know, an unknown amount of time. And then also just the processing itself is going to take a, an unknown amount of time. So this is an asynchronous call. What have we done in the past when we have asynchronous calls? How do we deal with them? Live data and report data. Uh, so live data, yeah, is one way that we've dealt with it. But actually with Firebase, we did a little bit differently. Do you remember what we did with asynchronous calls to Firebase when we were doing like the database, how we handled those situations? I wanted to insert something into a Firestore database. How did I know when it was done? What did I do? It's a pretty common structure, pretty common paradigm. Starts with an, yeah. A listener, yeah, we use a listener. Uh, so there's a on success listener, on failure listener, on complete listener that we can apply. And that's what we're gonna do here as well. It's a pretty straightforward process with Firebase stuff. Um, so I'm gonna add a on success listener and specify what I want to happen if this is successful. If it is successful, what am I gonna get back? I'm gonna get not just one face potentially, but a bunch of faces. It's gonna give me a list of faces. And then I'm gonna to have to go through that list and decide what I want to do um, with that data. So I can write a little for each loop. And then, you know, the sky is really the limit at this point. What, what do we want to happen uh, with this information? Um, we can do some very basic stuff for starters and then kind of poke around a little bit and see what other options might be available. Uh, if I just want to detect, um, you know, if the face is smiling or not, that's a classification, right? Is this a smiling face or not? Um, we would, you know, do something like this. If face dot smile, oops, smiling probability, right, is uh, not equal to Firebase vision, oops, face, uncomputed. Oh, I need to import this. I was like, why isn't it recognizing it? Another thing that I have to import. So if it was able to compute a probability for whether the face is smiling or not, it may not be able to, maybe there's not enough information. If it was able to compute a probability, then we'll grab the probability. And then if that probability is above some threshold, I don't know, it's a value between zero and one, right? Oh, it's just, it's a value between zero and one. Then I'll just, uh, I'll just put a message on the screen. Else, uh, I don't know, sad face. And what's a good number for this? I don't know. It's something that you kind of have to play around with, right? 80% probability of smiling is a pretty reasonable threshold, I feel like. It's, it's, it, this isn't a scientific app, right, that we're making right now. We're just doing something for fun, for demoing. Um, this is uh, certainly something you could tweak to get the results that you desire. 
Does it have a face comparison thing? Face comparison? Yeah. In what sense? Comparing for what so purpose? Like if you, I don't know, like um, face security, like to open the app to mm. so like compare it to some... That's a good question. So I think if you wanted to do something like that, what you would probably do instead is uh, check the landmarks because what that can let you do is, and I don't know how detailed it is, I have to look into the uh, documentation for more information, but it will give you the exact positioning of where the eyes and the nose and the ears are. Um, it will give you even detailed information as to like how much rotation there is on your head, right? And so you can do use all that information and a bunch of math to you know determine whether or not this is actually the same person. Um, that's not far off from how the actual com computing devices do it. Um, and then you could, of course, store all that data in a database and, and then use it to take over the world or whatever. I don't know. Like That's what they're doing with it, right? I don't know. Uh, try not to think about that part. Don't worry about it. Just, just smile and acknowledge that Google is taking all of your facial information. <laughs> Let's try it out. So it, as I mentioned before, we can't use the simulated camera to do this. There's no faces in there. There's no people in there. There's a cat, but cats don't smile, so that's not a good, uh, good use case. We need to use an actual camera for this. So if we want to set it up so that we, we're using the actual camera, uh, we're going to need to modify the emulator. So you're going to open up the virtual device manager. And the emulator that I'm using is this one at the top here. So if I click this to edit it, uh, it's not going to show up here, but if I show the advanced settings, there's a, an option for the camera, right? You can see right now it's set up so that uh, it's emulated. Uh, but I want it to use my webcam. So I'll just set it to use my webcam instead. And now it should... I actually have two cameras on here. I don't know which one it's going to be. I assume it's this one. Because that's the only one that I ever use. I'd never use this one. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. It's either going to be a picture of me or a picture of you all. We'll find out in a second. I think, in, unfortunately, in order to make this happen, I might have to power cycle this. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, like, I guess I could just hit this button and see what happens. Is it going to show me or is it going to show the simulated one? Let's see. Is it going to make me restart? Yeah, it's going to make me restart it. So, unfortunately, that's going to take a minute. I'm just going to power cycle it real quick. Also, wow, I can free up 9 gigs by getting rid of some of these old emulators. Let me do that real quick. I'm glad I'm here. I want that space back. Turn it back on. I also, I guess, need to... Oh, shoot. Let me just redeploy the app since I'm gonna to have to do that anyway and see if see if that works I may have to power cycle this emulator I hope I don't but I might have to to get those changes to take effect and so while while we're waiting on this to load up we can take a peek at some of the other things that Firebase uh, face detection can do there's quite a bit Uh, I mentioned a good portion of it. Um, and, and, you know, we can have a conversation about the other machine learning stuff that it can do as well. Uh, so, yeah, get the contours of facial features, eyes, eyebrows, lips, and nose. Uh, recognize the locations of all those things. Um, facial expressions. Track faces across frames so you can actually, like, follow somebody's face across multiple pictures, identify that it's, that's kind of what you were asking about, right? Identify it's the same person. Um, and this is really cool, right? This is, this is the Snapchat filter right here. This is the one where, you know, you feed it a stream of information from your camera and it just is constantly processing. And then when you open your mouth, you start vomiting rainbows, right? Like that's, that's the functionality. That's what it does. That kind of stuff has become easy enough to where you can just start dropping it right in your app. Um, so there's Stephen Hawking in outer space, and it's showing us the kinds of information that it's reporting back. The polygon where the face is, the coordinates on the image, 
and then where the left eye and the right eye are. Can I scooch this out of the way? No, of course not. Bottom of the mouth, all the other features, probability of smiling, left eye open, right eye open, right? Crazy amounts of stuff that it can detect. Here's contour. Here's an example of contour stuff that it can detect. The shape of your face underneath your nose, eyes. It's just kind of mind-boggling how, how much data, uh, how far we've advanced and how much you can just drop into your app it, it, with very little effort, right? It's kind of crazy. And this is just one of the, the library database provides for machine learning activities. The text recognition one is another very common one that also works pretty well. Um, it's not perfect. None of these things are 100% accurate, right? None of these things are perfect. They all have some wiggle room associated with them, but all right, let's try this again and see if it's going to use the real camera this time. I hope so. I hope we don't have to power cycle this, but I probably should have just done that. Oh, it's asking me for permissions again. I think that's kind of a good sign. Let's see. Let's press it again. Oh, yeah. Gosh, dang. I need to change that. That's not good flow. Eh? No, oh, darn it. Oh. Ah, shoot. I have to power cycle this guy. Uh, I could have hit restart. Darn it. Whatever. I have a question. Yeah. Would that be easier if you put it on a real device and then just like screen capture and then... So yeah, absolutely. You can uh, put it on a real device. That's very easy. To, I know you've done it because you've shown me. It's actually very easy to do, to put it on a real device. You just have to turn on developer mode on your device, I think, and then plug it into a USB cord and then it shows up uh, in the drop down here, right? Like it's, right. it's that simple. Um, which for all of you iPhone people out there, uh, of which I know there are a few, it is way easier than putting apps on your iPhone. Way, 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 way easier than putting apps on your iPhone. iPhone has their phones very tightly locked down. Um, unless you pay money to have a developer kit, they make it very difficult to get apps on your phone. Android doesn't care. You could argue that's a bad thing, right, for security purposes. Just look at like the, I don't know how, you, how many of you kept up with the Iowa caucuses a few weeks ago and how they tried to deploy that app very bad way to do it. Couldn't have done it with an iPhone, which like, well, maybe they shouldn't have done it, but um, just one of those things. Um, so did you have a question? Sorry. I was wondering which, both, which camera the emulator is showing you by default. Because I saw in the settings, you left the back of the camera on virtual screen. Oh, that's a good question. Hmm. I didn't even think about that. That's a good point. I might have switched to the wrong camera. Shoot. Well, I'm already kind of committed to trying this. Uh, Maybe you can just switch in the in the camera app that which camera. That would be good. I don't think you can do it through the phone. I think you have to go through the device manager to do it. I don't think you can do it through the phone. But yeah, this is what you're talking about, right? I only switched the. Hmm. Darn. Well, it might be too late. Please work. Oh, rats. I think you're right. I think I switched the wrong camera. Rats. Got to power cycle this yet again. I promise you it'll work. It's just I didn't set up the options correctly. That's my fault. They're both set to webcam now, so it should definitely work. Um, it's a little confusing, though, to have the same one come out of the phone. Oh, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, I guess the camera defaults to the rear-facing one, right? Not the, not the front-facing one, which is the opposite of your laptop, which is going to default to this one and not the, not the back one. Anyway. Um, so yeah, text recognition is possible. Object recognition is possible. You can take a picture of a room full of stuff and it'll say, there's a chair, there's a picture, there's a TV, right? Um, there's a cat. It can actually recognize all those things. Uh, it's pretty crazy. And then on top of that, if you're really into machine learning, which we offer a lot of machine learning classes here, and I encourage you to take them. They're pretty popular. 
um, you can develop your own models. You can take a TensorFlow model, which is a pretty common way of developing machine learning models, and you can dump it into Firebase, and it will take take that model and apply it to whatever you want on your phone um, through Firebase ML. So it's possible to use uh, you know, whatever machine learning models you want to use as part of your app, um, which is a pretty neat, uh, a neat feature. Uh, this is a relatively recent development too. When I taught this class last year, I think Firebase ML had like just come out. Like it was a brand new thing. Um, that it started to work. And they're still working on adding new features. Uh, for example, the voice recognition stuff, I think, is one that they're currently working on. Although there have been a lot of problems with that because Google, of course, wants you to use their voice assistant for everything. And so how do you, you know, avoid conflicts with that kind of stuff? Uh, it's definitely an issue. Um, but I think that's something that we'll probably see coming up in the future as well. With the machine learning stuff. Um, I really want to get this to work at least once before, before the end of class. I shouldn't have to recompile the app again because I didn't make any changes to the code. So once this starts up, I should be able to just start the app and go. It's called camera. Oh boy, I don't know if that's the right one or not. We'll find out. Looks good. You gonna do it this time, please? Oh, come on, what? Dude. Why the heck not? I can switch it around. Can't connect to the camera. Awesome. Well, great. Clearly I'm having problems with this. Uh, and now it's like permanently broken because I can't even get it to the, back to the default one. Bummer. I just tested this out yesterday and I didn't have any problems with it. And now, of course, today I'm running into the issues. Hmm. Well, uh, unless anybody's got some great ideas, unfortunately, I'm not sure that I know how to troubleshoot this right off the top of my head. I promise you that it does work. I wish I could show you an example. So uh, by going in directly into the camera app, you see what That's a good going. question, yeah. Let's try, that's a good idea. Let's see, if, let's see what happens when I do that. I still haven't power cycled it since the, uh, I, I did do a restart. I don't know if that qualifies as a full power cycle or not. It just takes so long to cycle the app. It's trying to avoid that. Hello? Hello? Oh, great. Oh. That's not good. Your device is broken. Did I ruin my whole emulator? Yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time. It won't be the last. Well, I'm gonna power cycle it again. Sorry guys, I know this is frustrating, but I think you've all probably been in similar situations before, right? And working with the Android emulator is uh, not the most fun part of app development, unfortunately. Have any of you tried the uh, any third-party emulators at all? There are definitely some popular ones out there. I've talked to some people about it. I don't know if they've actually done it or not. Uh, a lot of them require money these days. Um, unfortunately, for whatever, for whatever it's worth, people have, uh, if you look online, there's not a super high opinion of the built-in Android emulator, surprise, surprise, um, which means that third-party uh, emulator developers have realized that, oh, hey, enough people don't like the built-in one that we can make money charging people for ours. And uh, I mean, the good news is that they, they are pretty good. They do work pretty well. Uh, you just have to pay money to use them. So Jenny Motion is a very popular third-party one. It's a monthly fee though. Like it's not even like a one-time fee. It's like you're paying by the month to use their third-party emulator. So it's kind of a commitment. Um, I guess nobody's tried any third-party ones. Might be worth a try, depending on how frustrated you are with the built-in ones, for whatever it's worth. Are there any other questions while we're waiting on this phone to power cycle for like the third time? Hopefully in the last. I mean, it's definitely the last. I'm not gonna sit around and do this all day. This is the last try for me. Any other questions? 
this machine learning stuff's pretty cool, right? I hope I, I wanted to show it off because I'm hoping somebody will find some cool uses of it for your projects. Yeah, what's up? So is there like a size limit on the TensorFlow model that you can put in? Uh, that's a good question. There might, it wouldn't surprise me. Firebase is trying to find ways to nickel and dime people and all kinds of stuff. So it wouldn't surprise me if there was, but, uh, um, uh, take a look at the docs and see what they have to say about it. This is more of a coding demo than a information about the build your own model stuff, but it doesn't seem to imply. TensorFlow Lite is the one that you have to use. So here's what it says you can do for free. Cloud vision. So you can't do stuff on the cloud. I already talked about that, right? Custom model hosting. Yeah, it says it's free. Says it's free. I mean, they might put a limit, like how much you can do, but you can do at least some of it for free. So I don't know how beefy your models are, but uh, and then if you want to pay money for other stuff, you can. Dollar uh, fifty per k if you want to per per um, if you want to do your ML stuff on the cloud instead of on device. That sounds kind of ex that sounds kind of expensive to me, honestly. Yeah. For for a thousand image, I would assume. Oh yeah, that's probably what it is for a thousand images. <laughs> it's a little misleading. So one one image is a thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was a different page I was thinking of for the custom models. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Might give more information about it. Uh, I've been spending a lot of time with this actually uh, lately because um, while you guys are on spring break next week, I'm actually going out to Portland, Oregon for a conference and I'm going to be giving a workshop on using MLKit stuff uh, in Firebase at the conference. So um, this is something that's been on my mind a lot lately. It's a really cool tool. Eh? Eh? Nope, that's not a good sign. I will go back to my office and see if I can figure out what the heck I did wrong with that one. Uh, it, I, I imagine if I dumped that, oh wow. <laughs> that's really bad. I imagine if, <laughs> I imagine if I go back and uh, dump my emulator and start a fresh one from scratch, I'd have pretty good luck doing it. Um, I think uh, oh, okay. obviously I did something that made it angry. Did you try opening the camera? We still have a chance. Oh yeah, open the camera. Okay. Camera directly. Uh, here it is. Camera app. Yeah, oh. yeah. It's just not happy about my uh, webcam setup for whatever reason. I wonder if I need to. I mean, I guess it could be on my laptop setting somehow. Maybe I need to like turn the webcam on ahead of time or something like that. Or like, does does Android Studio need permission to access my webcam? Right. It could be something silly like that. I don't think that's the case. Uh, Every time I've done this in the past, it's just set it up and go. But clearly, there's a setting or something that I that I got screwed up somewhere, unfortunately. Um, just kind of a bummer. Uh, but uh, yeah. Um, so if you want to use a custom model, TensorFlow Lite hosting. Train your model, convert the model to TensorFlow Lite, and then host it on uh, Firebase. Yep. If you think about it, it makes sense for Firebase to want to host your models because you're basically giving them free machine learning models, right? Like, that's valuable for them and valuable for you. So, <laughs> so yeah, you're selling your soul a little bit when you do that, but or your model, whatever the case may be. What's up? It seriously says on there that if you use the Firebase hosting model capability, they just take whatever model you give them. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there is a very long legal document about what they can and will do with your stuff. I am being a little bit, uh, I'm, I'm uh, exaggerating a little bit, I suppose. I, I don't think they're going to just take your model and run off and make millions of dollars with it, but I'm sure that they are using it for some sort of 
data collection processing purpose, like absolutely, hundred percent. What's in it for them? What you know? What do they get out of posting your model for free? If if they're offering you a service for if somebody's offering you a service for free, right? Then you are the the product. Right? Your stuff is. They, they want you to have to use the paid features eventually. Yeah, they do want to get you to pay eventually. That is true. But in the meantime, for all the people who are using the free stuff, they have your data, and they're gonna they're gonna do stuff with it too. Um, that's just a fact. That's the world. That's the world we live in. Uh, all right. Well, I'm gonna give you a po post mortem on this dang camera thing, uh, either on Piazza or maybe in class on Thursday. There is no studio Thursday. Thursday, we're actually gonna talk about a different topic. We're gonna talk about maps and GPS on Thursday. Um, so no studio. Do a little GPS demo, and then oh. it'll be spring break. Last question. Uh, so, from the notes, the release notes that I read, um, Android Studio 3.6 has a, a lot of extra functions. On there. Yeah, yeah. Should we all upgrade? Now? If you want to upgrade, my advice would be to do it in between projects. Okay. Don't do it when you're in the middle of working on an assignment because it could break your mm -hmm. your assignment. So, okay. if you haven't started homework four yet, now's a good time to update. I if you've already started homework four, I'd, I'd finish it first and then do the update after. Thank you.